dear friends, welcome back to your favorite channel. Where we bring you trending and interesting news from around the world. I welcome you once again to this special session. Thank you for liking our videos. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for also reaching out to us. Thank you for supporting us. We appreciate you massively. Well, quickly, I would like to encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you are yet to subscribe. Please hit the bell icon so you can get notification whenever we post new stories. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you. Also, don't forget to drop out the comment section to leave your thoughts. Keep them coming. They are interesting and encouraging. Thank you so much, guys. All right, straight to the news. Christian persecution. UK lawmakers launch a report on Nigeria. Dedicates it to Leah Sheribu. The United Kingdom All-Party Parliamentary Group for International Freedom of Religion or Belief has launched a new report on Nigeria titled Nigeria, the Unfolding Genocide. The report launch took place at 1 p.m. yesterday in the House of Commons and reportedly featured speeches from the chair of the AWPG, Jim Shannon, MP, co-chair Baroness Cox and Rebecca Sharibu, the mother of Leah Sharibu, who was kidnapped by the BH guys. Her daughter is yet to be released. The group also bemoans the growing power and influence of Islamist extremism across the Sahel in their report. It notes that it is this power and influence that drives some Fulani headers to target Christians and symbols of Christian identities such as churches. Chair of the group, Jim Shannon, MP, in his foreword to the compilation, however, stated that the views expressed in the report are those of the group and not that of the British House of Commons or House of Lords. Shannon went on to state that those, though the COVID-19 crisis has been one of the most difficult and surreal challenges he had ever experienced in the UK, for Christians living in Nigeria, extreme challenges are nothing new. His words, shockingly for a Commonwealth country, Nigeria ranks 12th on Open Doors World Watch List 2020 of countries in which Christians are most persecuted. By comparison, Syria ranks 11th and Saudi Arabia ranks 13th with Iraq 15th and Egypt 16th. Nigeria is currently just one rank below extreme. Similarly, Sri Lanka ranks 30th despite bombings of worship centers on Easter Sunday 2019 which killed 259 and injured over 500. He identified the BH as one of the main drivers of the persecution in Nigeria, noting that they frequently abduct and kill those who refuse to conform to their extremists' brand of Islam. He gave several instances of the onslaughts in the last seven months as indicated in the findings. He wrote, On 22nd December 2019, in Borno State, the BH jihadists attacked two passenger buses and released the Muslim passengers. They then held back the Christians, separating the men and women. A pastor from Deeper Life Bible Church and two other men were killed on the spot, while the pastor's relative and two humanitarian workers were abducted. On 26 December 2019, members of the Islamic State, West African province, a Daesh affiliate, released a horrific video which showed the execution of 11 Christian prisoners, presumably to coincide with Christmas celebrations. Then, on Christmas Eve, Another horrific report came from a Christian village near the Chibok town in Bruno. Numerous BH jihadist driving trucks and motorcycles stormed into Guarangulum, firing at residents, looting all they could and burning down their homes. The saddest account of all emerged on Boxing Day 2019 when a Christian bride-to-be and her entire bridal party 
were massacred while traveling in Adamawa State to prepare for her New Year Eve's wedding. Father Francis Arizi, a Delsian communications director of Nigerian Catholic Church, reported that Matabulus, her sister Zainab, and five others were ritually slaughtered. He told Catholic News Service that they were beheaded by suspected BH insurgents at Goza on their way to her country home. He noted that though peaceable Muslims through collateral violence can also become victims of this cruel Islamist religious ideology, it is a destructive and divisive ideology which readily mutates into crimes against humanity and can pave the way for genocide. He noted further in the introduction that Fulani headsmen have resulted in the killing, maiming, dispossession, and eviction of thousands of Christians. It is difficult for us in the West to sometimes even imagine this kind of suffering, so we must recognize the stories of survivors. Describing an attack in Ngar village, he wrote, a survivor called Margaret said, My sister was raped and her wrists cut off before she was shot through the heart. They took my brother, his wife, and all their six children, tied and slaughtered them like animals. Similarly, Veronica from Dagon Noma said, Another man attacked me with a machet twice, once to the neck and once to my hand. I was so confused. I lost consciousness. When I woke up, I saw my daughter on the ground. She was dead. With my chopped finger in her mouth. Antonia Ajay from Karamai said, I saw my brother-in-law's body on the ground, hacked to pieces by a machet. Our home is destroyed. The hospital was burnt. They tried to burn the roof of the church by piling up the chairs, like a bonfire. Leah Sharibu is a symbol of collective struggle. He also brought to the fore the story of Leah Sharibu, whose mother, he said, he was honored to meet on a recent London visit. On Leah, on Leah he, wrote, he writes, Two years ago, 14-year-old Leah Shraibu was abducted by Islamist extremists from her school in Dabchi, northeast Nigeria. There are reports that she was enslaved, raped, and impregnated, giving birth to a child, and that she has been denied her freedom for refusing to convert to Islam as a precondition for her release. Leah represents the worldwide struggle both for freedom and religion and belief and the unacceptable violence directed at women and girls. There are thousands of Leahs held all over Nigeria and across the world. He said, the report is dedicated to Leah and the millions of others who suffer so unspeakably. Its purpose is to explore the drivers of conflict and to highlight the seriousness of the situation and the level of injustice that Nigerian Christians face. Shannon then suggests in his remarks that correction of the growing persecution of Christians in Nigeria should be a priority for the UK to help correct shortly. He also pleaded with his colleagues to spare a thought for those Christians who face not only a pandemic but also treats also threats of violence and persecution that we can't imagine. I urge the UK and Nigerian governments to do all that they can to bring an end to this violence and bring its perpetrators to justice. The report looked at all the key issues surrounding the activities of Islamic extremists in Nigeria. It also made recommendations on the menace. The UK all Party Parliamentary Group for International Freedom of Religion or Belief is a group of over a hundred British parliamentarians, 
from different political parties and both houses of parliament. It exists to promote Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which states that everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. All right, guys, what are your thoughts concerning this damning report on Nigeria? How do you see things? This is what we continue to say, that the world is watching. The international community are watching. They know what is going on, they see what is going on, and they are documenting. It is really, really sad that, you know, we have this kind of bad image outside the country. And, um, you know, when people are dealing with Nigerians, they tend to deal with Nigerians, you know, with this kind of um, ideas or thinking and thoughts at the back of their mind. Well, it is sad and unfortunate, but it is what it is. It is real. It is real and it is happening real. How long are we going to be in this particular situation? For how long are we con going to continue like this? Well, guys, it is what it is. Kindly drop by the comment section. Let us know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Please hit the bell icon so you can get notification whenever we post new stories. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your support and I'll see you on the other news. Thank you and bye for now.